there's a little delay in it. Yeah. So I can put on this one. I just have to wait for it to go live. There we go, we're live. All right, hi everybody. I'm Cassandra at It's Paid. Today I'm going to be talking to our CEO and founder, Ken Green. He's right here with me. Hi. Um, so the first question I have for you is, how did you get the idea to create It's Paid? Uh, good question. Uh, actually, I have, was a CEO of a collection agency back mm -hmm. in 2014, 2013, 2014, and I knew that we had to make some changes. I knew the industry was not making any changes. They were only going through the motions to, to pretend like they were making okay. changes. Uh, and, and a lot of people that were sent over for collections should have never necessarily been sent over for collections. And there's been a lot of complaints going on and the complaints have risen. So I was trying to figure out a way that, that we could change the perception mm -hmm. of the industry and change the way the industry acted. And of course, I don't think I could change the industry. I tried to start with the, with the company I was working with, but there was a lot of resistance to it. Mm -hmm. And I actually went back to school to figure out, okay, what can I learn to maybe look about culture change, maybe uh, look at uh, different types of industries to get into. And uh, I, I went to Cal State San Marcos and I enrolled in a health information technology course, which is a which is a two year program. And the, the first time I the first day I attended the class, I realized that uh, you know, obviously it's a technology class, but I realized that technology was moving very, very fast. I mean, it was already passing me by and I got really, really scared thinking, oh my oh, goodness, yeah. I'm going to become obsolete. What we do is going to become obsolete and, and technology is going to take over. And I'm thinking, what do we need to do? So at the end of that semester, you know, I was still racking my brain trying to figure out, you know, what do we need to do as an organization to mm -hmm. try to, you know, change what we do or try to fit a, a, fill a specific need. Uh, and then I was watching Charlie Rose one night and his guest was a person by the name of John Chambers. And John Chambers is a, the CEO of Cisco. And John Chambers was actually talking about how okay. in the future, all companies are going to be technology companies and used Uber as an example. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I got the idea of it's paid hey, going, well, you know what? We can use technology allowing companies and merchants to actually use the technology to reach out to their okay. customers before they yeah, yeah. send them over to collections. And that's how it's paid was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, what do you like best about working here? Uh, by far, arguably, it would be the people that work here. Yeah. Yeah. Organizations made up by the people. And, you know, it's it's great working with the people, being surrounded by people that have the same level of excitement, uh, um, enthusiasm. And really, the, the concept that I came up with is just one concept. But the ideas that people have, have thrown in have been part of its pay as well. So everybody's contribution to its pay has really made what it is, is today. So that's what I like about it. It's yeah. the people that and their contribution to its pay. Oh, okay. Um, who is one of your role models? Well, there's so many uh, people that have written books, you know, movies, uh, leaders, just uh, quite a lot of them. But I think I'll stick with what everybody says, parents. Uh, yeah, my parents. And because, you know, you grow up with them, you see their dedication, you, know, you see their, their perseverance, you know, you see that they overcome a lot of challenges themselves. Mm -hmm. And that, that, you know, in essence, uh, inspires you to want to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And as you know, most most kids are always trying to uh, seek parents' like approval. Parents. Yeah. yeah. Be like their parents. Yeah. So, I know. Yeah. I am. <laughs> Um, what are some of your favorite apps that you use currently? Um, well, I don't use that many apps, uh, but the one that I use the most is Uber. Uber, yeah. yeah. And, and it's the one that my daughter actually introduced to me one time. And ever since then, I'm like, oh, this is so simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great <laughs> so too. easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you get the rate to drive there. And of course, I always tell the driver, make sure you give me five stars, okay, <laughs> so I can get picked up. So. <laughs> sure. yeah. um, okay, so if you won the lottery, what's the first thing you would buy? World Peace. World Peace. Can you buy that? I, I don't even buy World Peace. I'm not really sure. I don't play the lotto. No. Uh, but they, I don't know what I would do if I if I won the lotto. I, I would probably just put it back into the business and try to get it to grow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Money is not necessarily, a, a, although you know, it's a, it's important, but it's not necessarily a big motivator in what I want to do in mm -hmm. life. So uh, I'm not a, a person that really looks at material or possessions okay. or things like that. I think money can be used if used the right way. Uh, it can enhance people's lives. But yeah. then if you look at how how often money can be used, it, it, it can be used in a negative way as well, yeah. uh, meaning that people can hoard the money or not, not use the money or spend the money frivolous, frivolously. Um, and I think that's what we're trying to educate people is that, look, you know, if you get money, you don't just go out and spend it on everything yeah. you think. 
Le learn to learn to use yeah. your money wisely, um, and and that's what happens oftentimes. People get themselves into this what I call a, a consumerism buying mode, and there's nothing wrong with it, but they overextend themselves, and when they overextend themselves, then they get into financial yeah. problems. So when you give them more money, they spend more money, uh, and and if you don't have a good framework or a good structure on on how to manage your money, you can get yourself back in trouble. Yeah. And that happens to most people that play the lottery. They like usually spend it all, and then was that right? Yeah. Well, I've read a lot of stories about that. I don't okay. Know it's... <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, yeah, that's maybe the reason I don't play a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And what's the hardest thing you have done? So far, well, again, there's uh, just like a lot of other people, uh, you know, everyone comes across many obstacles in life and, mm -hmm. and challenges that they have to, you know, they over, they have to overcome yeah. or, or try to uh, work around it. Um, and, and there's been several of them throughout my life, but I would have to say the one that's probably the most challenging is, is starting at Spade, yeah. getting it going. But but it's it, yet yeah, it's the most rewarding thing, mm -hmm. um, uh, without a doubt. And I think that the the harder the the, the challenge, the more you invest in it, the, the, the greater the reward for you. You. And not necessarily the reward in, in, in terms of monetary, but the reward and the satisfaction of getting things done. Yeah. yeah. So it's paid is, is challenging. It's introducing something that, that's never been introduced before. Mm -hmm. It's trying to change people's way of thinking, uh, change business processes. And, and it's, it's, as most people know, change is very difficult. Yeah. And, and a lot of people are reluctant to change. Yeah. yeah. And then what's your favorite thing to do in your free time? Free time. So I'm not sure. I don't have much free time, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not sure time is free either. Uh, I, I would have to say that uh, on the days of my downtime, I guess, would be that uh, I like to sit, relax. I like to uh, you know, kind of reflect on on things. Uh, occasionally read. Uh, I do like to watch a lot of documentaries. Oh yeah. Uh, and then you know, like to take my uh, our CO our CCO Chief Canine Officer uh, King out for walks, and, and like to go to the beach. Um, and then I guess, uh, you know, spend time in the outdoors. What's your uh, favorite documentary? Oh, whoa, there's, there's, a, <laughs> okay. yes. there's a lot of them. There's, a, there's quite a lot of those, sure. yeah. I would have to say probably one of the most inspiring ones that I saw recently, it has nothing to do with uh, um, um, what we're doing, but I thought it was inspiring enough. It's called uh, Alive Inside, and it talked about how um, uh, a person used music to uh, help uh, patients with dementia and Alzheimer's uh, remember. Yeah. And um, one of the challenges that person had was, uh, you know, you're talking about a $15 iPod, and then you can help uh, those uh, uh, patients and those people that are living in, in um, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, the acute care facilities or, or, or uh, um, nursing facilities that are, that have dementia and, and, and give them some music and they actually, you know, remember, you know, oh, wow. their, their past. So that was pretty inspiring yeah, to see that. Cool. Yeah. Um, what's in store for the future of It's Paid? There's a lot of things in store for, for It's Paid, but really what It's Paid is we really believe that we could change the way businesses and, and consumers can, can work together. Mm -hmm. We believe that, that, uh, you know, merchants have have an inherent desire to maintain relationships with their customers and not cut them off. And we believe that most customers want to stay doing business and that, yeah. that occasionally they may run into financial problems. And we call that a moment of truth. So what it's paid is really there for us to help merchants and consumers or merchants really help those consumers out at their moment of truth and maintain that relationship. So we're going to be releasing new products in the future that will help engage customers more with the merchants as well as improve those relationships and improve that experience that, that, that the merchants can offer the consumers or the, or offer their customers. Okay. And do you have any uh, final thoughts that you'd like to share or any advice for our viewers? Um, just, I would have to say that, you know, just make sure you control your finances. Don't over leverage yourself. There's nothing wrong with, with taking out loans and, and, and uh, assuming debt, as long as you assume debt uh, under the guys that you can actually afford it. That's the most mm -hmm. important thing. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us guys. And thank you for having the interview with me and we'll catch you next time. All right. Thank you.